All right, welcome back to the Sportsmax Zone. We continue our show by talking about the just-concluded Karifta Games. Well, we're turning our attention now specifically to the ongoing discussion sparked by the discretionary nature of how the Austin Sealy Award winners are determined. In the 2023, the decision to award Jamaica's Rashawn Clark the accolade came as a surprise to many. Clark won the under-20 boys 400-meter hurdles in 49.92 seconds, outside J. Hugh Gordon's 2010 record of 49.76. And there has been a raging debate about this year's decision, which saw Trinidad and Tobago's long jump under-20 girls record breaker, Janet Gans, being named Austin Seeley Award winner. But let's start now by reminding you of the reasons given for her selection. Keith Joseph is CEO of the North America, Central America and Caribbean NACAC Athletics Council. Let's hear from him. A team of distinguished officials were asked over the three days of competition to adjudge the single most outstanding performance. The single most outstanding performance. In these games, there were 10 athletes who were considered, and they were all record breakers in this competition. But at the end of the day, the team of three a judge, a young lady, who in her competition turned in a performance that ranks her currently third in the world in the under 20 category for her event, and a qualifier for the World Junior Championships that will take place in Lima, Peru later this year. The performance took place in the long jump in the girls under 20 division with a leap of 6.50 meters. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner of the Austin Sealy Award for the most outstanding performance by an athlete in the Games, Carifta Games 2024, Hails from Trinidad and Tobago, Janet Degans. All right, so Ricardo and Lance, the question now, based on what I would have outlined before, is it time to have a set criteria to determine the Austin Celia Award winner so that there isn't so many other options that people are talking about? You know what, I have so much to say on this. Um, before I even begin, though, I want to make it clear that what I am about to say is not a suggestion in any way, shape, or form that Janae DeGans of Trinidad and Tobago is not a deserving winner of the Austin Seeley Award. But what I want to do is to point out inconsistencies in how the winner has been determined over time. And definitely in my time covering the Carifta Games, which is over the last 13 or 14 years. Now, I'm going to utilize specifically what Keith Joseph pointed to as the reasons Jenny Gans was named Austin Seeley Award winner for 2024. Now, the first thing he said, which jumped out at me and I found rather inconsistent with what has been done in the past, is to say that the Austin Seeley Award goes to the single most outstanding performance. Now, understand that the single most outstanding performance is separate from the single most outstanding performer, yeah? And here's how I'm going to make the distinction. In 2015, Lance and Mariah, that was the second Carifta Games that I covered as a journalist. The first one was 2011 in Montego Bay. Mary Fraser of Barbados was named Austin Seeley Award winner. Now, I remember at the 2015 event being asked for my opinion as to who I felt um, should win the Austin Celia Award. Now, Mary Fraser won 
three gold medals, 800, 1500 meters, the under meters. 17, and she won the 3000 open. open. Yeah. I felt at the time that she should not have been given the Austin Seeley Award because no single performance of hers was of the quality and the level that I thought um, should be adjoined to the Austin Seeley Award. And so that's how I felt about it at that time. Um, but she won the award on the basis that she was a triple gold medalist, and even though no one performance um, was better than any other one performance or stood out significantly more than any one performance, the fact that she had those three gold medals... And I think she was pretty young at the time as well. And she was also quite young. young she yeah. was still an under-17 athlete. Yes, yes. Right. Um, and, and, yeah, I mean, and I she had also she won the Open event. I 14 or 15, yes. yes. So to have won the Open event, oh. that would have given her some credit as well. But I think you're sticking to the definition, right? Yes, Single. but I, I'm sticking to the point that Keith Joseph made that it is supposed to be the most outstanding performance. Single performance. Single performance. And I, even with her age lines, I don't think any single performance that she laid down in St. Kitts and Nevis was the best performance of the 2015 Carifta Games. So I had an issue with that then. But I left with the impression that there was consideration not just for one single performance, the but there work. could be consideration Overall. based on the body of work. Yes. Yeah. So that's the first thing that jumped out at me with Keith Joseph. So you thought the definition now was overall performance? Yes. So second thing that jumped out at me <laughs> was when Keith Joseph said that the Austin Seeley Award this year there were 10 individuals considered, and they were all record breakers. And I thought to myself, strange. Why are we only considering record breakers? Last year, the winner was Roshan Clark out of Jamaica. He did not break a record. But the understanding is that if your performance is of a significantly high quality, whether it is a record or not, it should be considered. So I am not here to say, mind you, by the way, let me just say clearly that my pick for Austin Seeley was Michelle Smith of the U.S. Virgin Islands. Who was clearly not considered because she didn't, she didn't break a record. There you go. Michelle yeah. Smith won the 400 hurdles on the 20 girls and she won the 800 on the 20 girls. But she missed both records um, very, very closely. Okay. Um, but the suggestion here is that she was not considered for the Austin Seeley Award. I have an issue with that. And let me show you guys why I have an issue with that. I have a graphic prepared. So World Athletics, the governing body for track and field, they assign points to every single performance in the sport across all the events. Now, I want to look specifically at just the under 20 performances, which includes Janae Gans, um, and some of the other outstanding performances from Carifta, and I want to show the public how World Athletics feels about the performances. Not me, Ricardo Chambers, but the governing body for track and field. So let's have a look at that graphic um, just to show you. So based on World Athletics, the single most outstanding performance at the Carifta Games was the 10.15 done by Devonte Howell of the Cayman Islands. That scores him 1,155 points. What the adjudicators of the 2024 Austin Seeley Award um, are telling me is that because Devontae Howell did not break Johan Blake's amazing record of 10.11, is that he was not considered. Sabrina Dockery, girls 100 winner, 1126, 1,144 points. Yeah. Not considered again because that's not a record. By the way, Carifta still has Aileen Bailey and Tamika Clark at 11.03, highly controversial um, record from 1998, which I don't think is the record, but that's a whole different discussion. Michelle Smith comes in third at that list with her 56.28. Tiana Springer, the 400 winner from Guyana, fourth on that list. Janae DeGans, based on how World Athletics sees the individual performances, is fifth on that list with 1,108 points. 
Um, sixth, yes, yeah, sixth, sixth on that list. Yeah, Gary Carr, 200 is in fourth position. Part of the reason I felt that Michelle Smith should have been the Austin Seeley Award winner for 2024, note that that single performance that she has, 5628, 1,133 points. No, but given that I had the experience of 2015 where a group of performances was used to determine the winner in that year, I thought to myself, well, Michelle Smith winning the 800 in 20618 and the 400 herders in 5628, and you can see how World Athletics ranks that 5628, I thought to myself the combination of her two performances um, was deserving of the Austin Seeley Award. Um, Clearly, that was not the case. But even if you say that, no, she is not the one um, because 5628 is not strong enough, then why isn't 1015 the Austin Seely Award winner given the incredible nature of 1015? I don't think we understand how impressive 1015 is um, in the scheme of World Junior Sprinting. Um, and a young man who, by the way, defended his, his career to under-20 title. Um, and, and led a 1-2 for his country. And led a 1-2 for his country. Unprecedented. Unprecedented. So yeah. there, there were unprecedented things about his performance as well. Um, I felt it would have been a no contest if, if Howell had won the 100-200 double or Sabrina Dockery had won the 100-200 double. That didn't happen. And I don't want to take anything away from young Janae DeGans because I thought her performance was quite special as well. Outstanding right. performance, 6.50 meters. It is a Carifta Games record. Um, but I wasn't convinced, or well, let me not say I wasn't convinced, but I am still concerned about how inconsistent the decision making is and how you can be saying to me last year that you don't have to break a record or 2015 that you can use a group of performances but in 2024 i'm hearing something different and that is what is concerning for me about how the the, the winner of the austin Seeley award is chosen yeah and when we heard the explanation coming from keith joseph and he was specific in pointing out that it was the single, it was deemed oh, yes. the single most impressive performance. performance. Yes. And I'm not sure in all my years of co covering Carifta Games that that has been the criteria. And as you, as you correctly pointed out, I have seen situations where a group of performances by an individual athlete may be deemed as superior to anything else that we had seen. Like and even that Mira Fraser year when she, yeah. she won. I, I, was that a year there were no records at the Carifta Games? No, it wasn't. It was not. So you I had think records it was there. You had records and okay. you had outstanding individual performances that I certainly felt at the time because I was in, I was in St. Kitts and Nevis and I remember deliberating with a lot of the journalists mm -hmm. as to why I didn't feel that it was to go to Mary Fraser. Yeah. So it's not that there were not outstanding yeah. performances at, at, at that Carifta Games. Deja Hodges... Um, Rec performances last year didn't include records. No, they didn't. And, and she won. In 2022, and she won. In 22, yeah. And I thought, and I thought Adeja Hodge was a clear winner, yet yeah. she didn't break a record, yeah. but she'd won the 100, she'd won the 200, and she'd done the long jump, and it wasn't that she won these events, but the manner in which she did it as well. Commanding. Commanding, yes. and moving from semi-final action in moving from the long jump final to semi-final action in the 200 yeah, and then going and back then going back and yeah. winning the long jump on her final effort it was spectacular there was something electric about it and so i felt in no uncertain terms that that was, was deserving yeah. of yeah. the austin yeah. but then Award, ricardo you but too, there were no records but you too then were looking at her overall performances adija hodge when you yes, think about because it. i had the experience from 2015 and by 2022 I had come to an understanding, at least I thought, that it was okay so to discuss the Austin Seeley Award winner in that way, an athlete who had put together an outstanding group of performances. Which Michelle Smith did. Which Michelle Smith but did. But this is like the Ballon d'Or. <laughs> and, 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 like... <laughs> and that's why I felt in that moment that, yes, Michelle Smith is my Austin Seeley Award winner for 2024. Yeah, the, the other thing Keith Joseph pointed out correctly, that... The performance by Janae 6.50 landed her number three in the under-20 
uh, top list, at the rankings list at, yes. at the moment. Michelle Smith's 400 meter hurdles uh, performance well. ranked her number three. Yes. So and there were other athletes on the list that I showed you yes. who were top three in the world at the time as well. Yes. And in fact, I actually think Lance and Mariah that that is not the best way to do it. I think maybe one of the other ways is to look at the the world list for under 20s and under 18s or under 17s, given that this category is under 17 in the previous year or over a number of years. I think there has to be some greater historical significance um, to the achievement than just saying she is number three in the world right now. Because part of the issue with number three in the world right now is that a lot of countries with this age group, U20s, U17s, they are not at the peak of their season yet. Yeah. Um, some of them are just coming from indoors. They have not even started competing outdoors yet. And so it is an unfair comparison yeah. to what is going to happen in the event in 2024, which is the season. The season is not January to Carifta. Yes. The season goes up in the case of this year all the way to early September mm -hmm. when the World Under-20 Championship ends in, in mm -hmm. Lima, Peru. So mm -hmm. I find that that is not the best way of assessing it. So mm -hmm. I also had an issue with saying, oh, she was number three in the world because the, she's not the only one. Yeah, the, 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 the key point that we have to make here, though, is that I think there were more candidates for the Austin Celia Award this year than I've seen many, many years yeah, prior. There were a lot of... Because they were really, really outstanding performances. Yes. And I agree with the point that you made earlier on, Ricardo, that Janae DeGans' performance was solid enough to be an Austin Celia Award winner yes. because, you know, it was, it was outstanding yes. and um, dominant and, and a record and world class. Yes. But the consistency of, yes. of how these awards are chosen and the is, fact is that questionable. Maybe it's who you like at the end of the career. It can't games. be. It, I, it and that's the be. point I'm making. It shouldn't be. And that's the impression that I'm starting to get, that maybe whichever panel sits down, it's all about who you like. And I think we have to be careful not to get there. I thought this Devontae Howell performance was sensational, Lance. Yes, he ran 10-1-5, but look at this. Yeah. He is shutting down, beating his chest, arms out wide, three or four meters from the line. I suspect had he ran through, he probably would have broken Johan Blake's, Blake's record. record or gotten significantly closer. Mm -hmm. But 10.15 is a special performance, although it is not a record, but it is not a record because the record is already so outstanding yeah. and so world class. So I think when you when you judge it this way, you are putting the, 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 the sprinters, because that's where the Caribbean traditionally is yeah. great, yes. at a disadvantage because they are chasing significantly better records than a jumper or a thrower um, who are chasing records that are well within world standard. Um, and so, yeah, that, that was just among the, the issues I had. No, they are still, even with everything that I've said, um, when you get down to a set criteria, you're still going to have to figure out how to weigh under-17 performances versus under-20 performances because the under-17s are not going to run as fast as the under-20. So what criteria do you put in place yeah. to ensure that they have a fair chance of winning the Austin Sealy Award as well? So the criteria will have to take that into account. But I think the individuals across the region who know um, with NACAC, who governs the Carifta Games, need to have a sit down and say, let us see if we can put something together as a workable criteria that will make it um, easier in, 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 in a, or fairer maybe in adjudicating. And understandable. Way. Yes, and Because understandable. at the moment, it is, it, it's questionable. But yes. you know, one of the things they would say, those presiding over these decisions, is that you can't please everybody and that you, you can, know but at least with with your criteria take if for you can example explain. the while i think that criteria requires some level of adjusting and improvement um the jamaica national sportsman and sportswoman of the year awards part of the thing with that you can tell who the winner is going to be because the criteria is so, so specific so specific yeah, and it's so well clear, defined well, well defined, defined. Yeah. okay yeah. Um, and i am not even saying that the the austin Sealy award winner or the criteria for the austin Sealy award winner needs to be that defined but i think there needs to be some clearer guidelines yeah. 
as to what constitutes um, the Austin Sealy Award winner, what leads to um, determining the Austin Sealy Award winner. Well, team, if it's up to us, we could sit here for the next how many minutes we have left and talk about this. But we have a lot more in store, so we're going to take a break and then we come back. We have another topic to talk about. <laughs> 